Hello everyone. Welcome to another talk here. Um, so we're going to do analysis on the melody for Nuage. So I was spending some time this morning uh, writing out the melody uh, based on a um, on a Django Reinhardt recording and um, do the melody too, so um, or just the uh, the intro as well, which I, I'm not sure we'll analyze because I haven't finished writing everything out, but um, maybe I'll kind of go on memory on that. But um, so, what are some of the goals that um, we can set out when we're trying to work on a um, melody? What are some of the things that we want to achieve? Well. One thing is that we want to um, see how it relates to to a harmony. Um, understand a bit about how the rhythm works, and also sort of when um, certain notes, kind of based on the harmony or the chords, um, land on on beats, so strong beats or um, or when they might land on the on the end of a beat or something like that. So let's begin here, and um, we'll do a quick tune up. If you're you're welcome to tune with me. Um, so this is available to um, members on the YouTube channel as a video. And also um, as a podcast, um, audio only, so that I can benefit members as well. Take the talk in the car and or wherever you happen to be on a walk or whatever, and then watch the video later. Alright, so pretty tuned up here. Alright, so um, talking about the melody, um, so one thing I was noticing, uh, just transcribing from the video, maybe I'll talk a little bit about that as we go along, or transcribing from the um, well, it was audio I was listening to from YouTube, but it wasn't, wasn't really a video. I think it was a still picture, but anyhow. At least kind of some differences uh, between this and the that and the real book. All right, so I'm not going to talk too much about how to play it, but we're going to play... Okay, we have this. Now I think he plays something like something like that, just if my memory serves me. Um, so in this uh, melody here, the real book, um, they play this A flat, which I didn't hear him ever play that, but maybe a different version of it uh, might include that note. But typically played some some uh, variation of that. Anyway, we see that we end up, we start on, out on a tone that's outside of the key. So we're in the key of G as we talked about. Right, and it starts on uh, C sharp, right? So that's, that's of interest. And then let's take where he lands the those group of notes, that portion of the phrase. Uh, we land on the F natural, so also a, a note that's outside of the um, key area. Let's see if I can 
bring my close up of the guitar neck here. see all that all right all right so we end up on the F natural there so that's the first beat of the form so you can think okay the key that we're in how does it relate to that so it's a little outside that right because we have an F sharp and this is an F natural but it's the fifth of the, the first chord, so it's fairly consonant on the chord itself. It goes on nine on the E flat seven. Okay. Okay, now this E natural feels like it's passing over to the E flat, which is also on the on the beat. Right, and then it's the flat five, so it's a chord tone on the A minor seven flat five. And then it becomes the flat nine of the D seven. And then we get to D, which is gonna be the fifth of the G. So you can see we're on fifths, some sort of five on these two chords, okay? The five kind of becomes the nine of the five chord. So the flat five, flat nine, okay? Natural five to the natural nine, flat five to the flat nine, but ends up being the same note, it's just, how you relate it to the chord. Okay, so you can see we have the the fifth of the chord working for us there. And we get some kind of descending motion, um, chromatic tones. So the next few bars, we have pretty much the same kind of thing, right? Okay, and then we get these um, new pickups into the next uh, measure. So we have it's really nice how um, he handles it on this uh, particular recording that I'm listening to. Um, it sounds really good, and um, I think there's even some bending in, in there. So. And then um, I think it kind of goes uh, something like that into that A. But we're going to get into that a little more uh, later on, uh, or in another video anyway. So that's going to be part of the melody video that I'll put together. So now uh, this A that we, that we end up on is the flat third of that F sharp minor seven flat five. And it's interesting, so we get this other outside tone, that A sharp there. Okay, so we're kind of right in the middle. Let me just highlight what we're looking at. Working right through here. Okay, so we get Okay. So 
also another moment where we're landing on the third of the chord. So, so far, as far as picking an important moment, like the first beat or even a half a beat before that, if it's tied over, um, those are kind of landing points where we could think about, okay, this is uh, something that probably is going to describe the chord to some extent. Okay, so just to review, all right, we started out with this. So that's the flat third. Okay, and then we're going to go. And that's the flat third of that chord, E minor. Okay, so we'll get into this next part here. And, uh, I think I'm going to go with the highlighting thing, and um, I'm going to keep this as uh, friendly to um, audio-only listeners as possible, too. So. All right, so here we have another tone that's outside of our our diatonic sort of key area. Okay, it's the third of this chord, right? And then we go to the C natural, and then back to the C. Okay, that's the third. Third, third. All right, and we go on from there. This is the fifth, flat seven, nine. Okay, and then the, the D, it's going to be the root note of this next chord, D7. So if we just survey some of those important moments in the melody where maybe a phrase ends, and we can think about how that relates to um, a given chord. So, so far, if we just surveyed those, we've, have, we've had fifths, ninths, thirds, and roots. Okay, now this next phrase, kind of just like the beginning. Okay, let's get into something new. So we co we've covered this, so we'll move forward here. All right, so what do we have here? So we have... Okay, so it's chromatic, right? We've got... D, C sharp, C natural, B natural, B flat. So every every fret there. Okay, so what are we landing on here? What does how does it relate to the chord? Actually, I'm going to highlight both of these. So. Okay, so we're there. All the way on the left hand side on this B flat or E flat minor seven. Note is B flat. Okay. So that's the fifth of that chord. And notice the fifth becomes the nine of the A flat. Okay. And then we have the A flat. That's the flat five of the D minor seven flat five becomes the flat nine of the G. And then we get to the fifth of the C major seven. So it follows very similar um, sort of pattern to the beginning of the of the melody. So as a guitarist we could even just bump it up here and even 
just play the same shapes. Okay, so instead of playing it kind of uh, sixth fret through third fret, we can play it from about eleventh fret through eighth fret with the same shapes. Okay, so moving forward here a bit. All right, so we have yeah, this coming up. Okay, we go way up here, so. And there are some interesting details to, to that in the recording that I'm looking forward to sharing with you all. Um, so I'm gonna make a melody video of, for, the, um, for the whole channel um, as well on this. But I, I might share some of the melody um, as I go along and write it out. So I've only written out the standard notation so far. I haven't done the tablature yet. All right, so what do we have here? So this note, is going to be the fifth of the C minor, which becomes the nine of the F7. Okay, so that's one of the goals. We need to be able to identify some of those things. Okay, now we're going to the root note of the G. So we're hearing this a lot, fifths and roots, not a lot of roots, but some, uh, fifths, thirds, nines. All right, so let's take it to the end of the melody here. So this should be pretty much, it's like the, kind of like the beginning. And I kind of like that sound, even though I, I don't know that he's playing that. Oh, I'll have to listen to more recordings, but you play something like that. Okay. So again, just like the beginning. So we basically kind of um, analyze this. There's kind of an interesting chord there. We get the natural 13, kind of flat 9. So that's a nice chord. All right, so we want to be able to think about how these things relate to, um, to the chords. And we also want to look at you know, when something lands on a beat versus between beats. And all that. All right, everybody. Well, um, let me know if you have any questions. Um,
So um, let me know, especially, uh, well, anyone really, um, anyone watching it or listening to the podcast or uh, anyone in the member area, uh, let me know what you'd like to um, explore with this. So I'm, I'm really kind of thinking about going with you know, one tune per month and just trying to really um, explore it quite a lot and um, think about different ways to kind of work with the... Uh, the whole picture of, of the YouTube channel. Um, so I want to do more like melody. Uh, obviously, I've been doing melody videos, which has tend to do well, really well. Um, but also do some kind of improv videos and and stuff. So um, so if I could do some chord, you know, rhythm kind of thing, uh, improv stuff. Uh, uh, I'd like to get out three. Uh, or four per per month. That would be great on there. And then do like five per week on the member area. All right, everybody. Thanks for checking this out. Thanks for being a member. Thanks for your support. I will uh, see you all in the next one. Have a great practice session.